Hi, I'm Andrea. And this whole talk started off with a question from Henry Sagerman, who I talked with earlier this morning, about how would you make mathematical cuisine? And by mathematical cuisine, we don't mean something like cookies, which I'm sure everyone's seen before. These are photos from Gwen Fisher from when we made them together a couple years ago where you just take cookies and you put them together into nice mathematical shapes like braids or polyhedra. Um, but we mean something that you can actually taste, like if you had your eyes closed and you were actually blind, that it's the flavor of the food that gives you something that's mathematical. And of course, I thought about this for a while, and the obvious answer is Fibonacci lemonade. Uh, what is Fibonacci lemonade, though, other than extremely attractive when food colored? Well, it's a layered drink, and the layers are put together as the sort of the Fibonacci ratio, so you can sort of see what's going on. As you might know, lemonade is made out of lemon juice and sugar and water. It's a beverage. Um, and we have made a bunch of different layers such that the topmost layer has a little bit of sugar and no lemon juice, and then you get more sh the same amount of sugar and lemon juice. And you'll note that lemon juice is going 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, while simple syrup is going 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. So in addition to having the amount of flavor in both varieties of sour and sweet increasing by the Fibonacci sequence per layer, you also get this sort of nice approximation of the golden ratio between the flavors. So you've got like all kinds of math going on in this beverage. Um, and these proportions are proportions for a half cup of total volume. It's not that you only have lemon juice and simple syrup in your beverage because that would be kind of disgusting. You are adding water to fill in the extra volume. Um, and so I know this is kind of sad because I'm giving a talk about food and none of you get to eat any, although they do serve lemonade upstairs at the Ritz around now, so if you end this and feel like you really need lemonade, I know where you can get some. But the good news is it's really easy to make at home, and I put together a set of key guidelines for you if you are sitting around like I was there puzzling how would you make lemonade. Um, first, you probably already know this, liquids with more sugar are denser. Denser things layer below lens dust things. This also means you should pour them first or else you won't form layers, they'll just sort of slowly seep through and mix until they get to the bottom. Second, you works much, much better if you pour slowly over a full cup of ice. Uh, what's happening here is that the ice has a lot of little things and is adding friction, and so as you pour, it's decreasing the momentum of the layer that you're pouring, and that decreases the amount of mixing, because you, if it mixes and it hits really hard, it'll just all sploosh around and ruin it, which isn't to say that you can't make a layered drink without ice. People do it with alcohol all the time, but it's really hard to get more than a couple of layers. So here's one without ice. Two, maybe three layers, depending on how you feel about the yellow in the middle. And in case you actually need the whole method, we'll go back to our first thing. You First, you fill the glasses with ice. I'm going to not keep reiterating that. And then you add your lemon juice and simple syrup. And note that I keep saying simple syrup here rather than sugar. It's especially important for anyone who wants to run this as a workshop with little kids. Do not use granulated sugar. It is even messier than simple syrup. I don't even know how. Um, <laughs> simple syrup is pretty messy too. Um, and then if you want your lemonade to look cool like mine, you can add food coloring. Again, this mathematical property of this has nothing to do with the food coloring. It's something that you can taste. So as you're sipping it, it gradually becomes more and more flavorful um, until first it starts off kind of bland and it ends up kind of overwhelming, depending on how many layers you have. But the good news is, is that the ratio, this turns out to be decent. Um, that I was using, assuming you have one, one sugar water in your simple syrup. If you're using something else, then all bets are off. Um, I trust by now that everyone has figured out all the steps here. Um, so we'll just skip ahead to a fun picture of your result that you yourself could drink at home. 